in the inheritance cycle and I'm here in the UK to answer some questions for listening books and I'm going to start with the first one here open this up and this question is from Thomas and Thomas asks is time travel possible in Algasia and my answer is yes if it is possible in the real world we certainly know time travel forward in time is possible. If time travel in the, into the past is possible in Allegasia, it would require an enormous amount of energy, probably more than any one person, whether human or elf, could summon up. So, technically possible, but highly improbable. All right, so my next question is from Purple Wombat. I love that name. And the question is, are you a fan of the Elder Scrolls franchise? If so, did it influence the inheritance cycle at all? I'm a huge fan of the Elder Scrolls series. I never got to play Morrowind or Daggerfall, but I did play Oblivion back in the day and battered my head against that leveling system. And I have played Skyrim from start to finish. Literally, I have actually finished the storyline in Skyrim, and I have modded the heck out of that game. I have a custom castle, and I have a horrible habit in that game of collecting every single piece of blank paper that I find in the game and sticking it into a drawer in uh, the house in, was it Whiterun? Yeah, I think Whiterun. So yes, uh, I'm a big fan of the series. Uh, I, it has not directly influenced my work, but the 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 world that they've created is a wonderful one, and I love to play in it. All right, and now we have a question from Scarlet. And Scarlet asks, Angela the Herbalist is one of my favorite characters ever, and I know she's based off your sister. That's true. So I'm wondering how many quotes from the books are things your sister actually said in real life. More than you would suspect. Uh, for example, the argument about frogs and toads that appears in the first book, Aragon, is a real conversation that my sister had with an uncle of ours. Uh, for the record, all toads are frogs, but not all frogs are toads. Had to think about that for a second. So, uh, yes, my, my, I've stolen quite a few lines of dialogue from my sister, and fortunately she has a good sense of humor about it, or else I wouldn't be talking to you about it now. Question number four here is from the Slunch. I think I'm saying that right. Safira, to my remembering of the books, spent a lot of time apart from any of her own species, all but one of which attacked her in some way at some point. Does she have any social quirks that would seem strange or funny to another dragon? Great question. No one's ever asked me that before. I'd say that Safira is definitely an awkward dragon compared with other dragons. We see this when she gets to meet Glader, the gold dragon in Eldest, and she's rather awkward about him and is sort of hopping all around him like a, like a puppy around a large, large dog. And, uh, and of course, Safira is immensely devoted to Aragon, probably to the point where another, uh, the old dragons who are with their writers would look at her and say, you know, you need to spend some time with yourself a little bit and, you know, uh, figure out who you are apart from your writer, which she does get to do in some of the later books. But um, no, Safira is a little awkward as a dragon, but she is growing up and becoming less awkward. <laughs> This question is, <clears throat> is from Claire, and she says, have you ever considered narrating your own audiobooks? I have, and it may be something I'll do in the future. I enjoy reading. I especially enjoy readings in public and performing my work, so who knows? Maybe one of these days. That said, Gerard Doyle, who read my audiobooks, has a fantastic voice and is a trained actor, and he did a wonderful job reading my audiobooks. Mm -hmm. 
All right, question here from Ibid, and I think I know who this is, actually. And he says, if Ertharis sent Jode a spell to read, does that mean Jode is a magic user? No, not necessarily. In Alagazia, it is possible to pick an object, a physical object, like a scroll or a plant or a coffee mug or something, and you can implant a spell on that object and imbue the object or attach a certain amount of energy to that object so that a non-magic user could come and say, read the spell off a scroll, and reading that spell would release the energy that had been stored in the scroll, and as a result, cast the spell. So that means that it is possible for a non-magic user to use magical artifacts to cast spells. It's not something that's done that often, but it is a useful thing for people who want to use magic but aren't spellcasters spell themselves. <laughs> This question is from Jackie. Jackie says, I'm 14 and want to write a book. I've got lots of ideas. Can you give me any tips on how to get started? Why, yes I can, Jackie. First of all, you want to plot your story out from start to finish. That means you need to know exactly what happens in your, in your story to the point where you could sit down with your friends and you could tell them the story, like a storyteller, verbally, and have it still make sense and still be exciting and emotional and moving and all of those things. Start your story as close as possible to the moment in which your main character's life begins to change. Change is exciting, monotony is boring. Learn everything you can about the language you're writing in. Write about the things you care about the most because writing is sometimes hard and if you're truly passionate about the material, that will get you through the two, three, four, five hundred pages you're going to need to write, and uh, accept right from the beginning that you're going to make mistakes. You will write bad sentences. You will write bad books sometimes, and that's okay. That is part of the process. Every published author does that. Every professional author does that. The trick is to accept it right now that mistakes are part of the process and that it's okay. That doesn't mean you're a bad writer. As long as you're willing to uh, work hard and improve and fix the things that didn't work the first time, you will get to where you want to go eventually, and you become immune to failure. So I wish you the very best of luck, and don't give up. We have a question here from the Garnetto, and I'm pretty sure I just met the Garnetto at uh, my event in Manchester the other day. Uh, the question is, what species is Angela? Namely, is she a Time Lord? What a great question. I would love to answer that, but that might spoil things in Book 5. So this question is from Kubo SOS. I believe I'm saying that correctly. If not, forgive me. If voices used in nonverbal communication are similar enough to actual voices, because not only words but sounds can be transferred, could something like a speaker get enchanted to allow dragons to talk? Whoa! Let me think about that for a second. Theoretically, I want to say? Question mark? Um, I think that it would be possible to enchant a speaker to transmit the telepathic thoughts of some living creature in my world, in Alagazia. However, there's no guarantee that the voice that would be produced would sound the way that their mental voice sounds. My mental voice does not always sound the way my speaking voice sounds, and I would imagine that's true for a lot of people. So. Um, I'm not quite sure if the translation between thoughts to uh, sound waves would be quite as seamless as you might imagine. Uh, it's also possible that the speaker itself, depending on the size, would influence the timbre of the voice produced. But yeah, you should be able to transfer thoughts into sound um, using a proper spell. Uh, it might be a little, little tricky, but you could probably do it. Alright, another question from Ibid. 
Who is Silvari the Enchantress, the person who fashioned Kuarak's body? What race is she? Is she still alive? And have we seen her before? Is she Angela? Ooh. Well, Silvari is an elvish name, and you can tell because of the accent mark on the I at the end of the name. Uh, she is, I always imagined her as an elf. We have not seen her at the, t at the moment, and uh, whether or not she's still alive, I'm going to um, keep that as a piece of private information for the time being. All right, we have a question from Ibid and Garnetto, both. What should concerned fans do to get a new Aragon movie? Your website still says to email Fox CEO. What should we be doing now that the Disney merger is happening? Uh, the Disney merger is still in the process of being finalized, and it should be finalized in the next month or two. That's my understanding. Uh, at that point, I assume Disney is going to take a nice, long, hard look at all of the properties they're acquiring from Fox, which includes Aragon. I hope Disney is going to want to do something with Aragon. We shall see. The best thing that you or any other readers can do to help support that would be to simply do what you're doing already, which is buying the books, coming to events, and just showing your enthusiasm for the series. That in and of itself is what is required to show the studio that the fan base is there, that it's worth making a movie, and that, um, uh, that the movie would be successful. So thank you for the question, and I certainly hope that we'll get to see another film one of these days. Question from Matthew. When is the next book? And what are you working on at the moment? When is the next book? Man, I just had a book come out! Literally! Um, no, it's okay. Uh, the next book is always, and this is always my answer, no matter when you ask me this, my answer is the next book is coming out as soon as it is humanly possible. Um, I am working right now on finishing up this massive sci-fi novel that I've been wrestling with for the past few years, and I'm only three chapters from the end of the book, and as soon as I finish touring for The Fork, The Witch, and The Worm, I'll be going home to wrap that up, and it should only take like a week, week and a half to get through those last few chapters. So if I am pleased with the version of the book I now have, um, there's every chance that it'll, it will be published before too long. If I'm not pleased with it, then I'm going to move on to some new project and write that as quickly as possible. However, I do plan on doing more uh, uh, entries into the series of Tales from Allegasia. Uh, the Fork, the Witch, and the Worm is the first entry into that series, and I want to do many more. And I'm still planning to do a full-size novel in the world of Aragon, and that is the book I'm often referring to online as Book 5. Thank you.